Hi, it's May here. There's a quote I love, and here's how it goes. Inside every working anarchy is an old boys network. Mitch Kapoor said this, and he's the one who founded Lotus Development Corp and developed Lotus 123, one of the early spreadsheets. I've loved this quote ever since I read it in Wired magazine. And what it says to me is that even within a society where there's no government or authority, there's still an order and some form of old boys network. Yes, even in chaos, there's an old boys network. And that's alive and well, even if we can't see it, it is there. Now the old boys network exists in many realms, not just in gender or race or politics. It exists anywhere where there's a group that's the in group, as in in power, in charge, in control, or simply in the know about how things work. Here's a story to give you an example. Where we've lived in the US and the UK, it's tended to be the moms that take the kids to school and pick them up after school. Now, I didn't get to do that most of the time because I was at work and I had a morning meeting every morning at 7.30, so my husband Len would take our daughter Kristen to school and pick her up, and this is when she was seven years old. And it was all going really well until that Wednesday morning. So Wednesdays were brownie outfit day. So Len took out the brownie outfit, Kristen put it on, they had breakfast, Len dropped her off at the school gates. And then when Kristen was in the cloakroom where they hang all the coats, she peeked in and saw that nobody else had the brownie outfit on. Yikes. She was really embarrassed, trying to figure out how she was gonna make all this work. Then, thank goodness, Olivia walked in and she was wearing her brownie outfit too. Wonderful, glorious Olivia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, right? So Kristen felt a whole lot better. The two of them walked in. It was no problem the whole rest of the day. It's a lot easier to be brave when you're not the only one. So as it turns out, Kristen and Olivia are the only two kids in the class whose fathers bring them to school and pick them up at the end of the day. And what had happened was the troop leader for the Brownie um, troop felt ill the night before. She called one of the other moms. That mom called the other moms. And everybody else knew except for these two dads. The epilogue of all this is that two of the moms who were neighbors uh, decided that they would take the two dads under their wing a little bit and make sure they were included. The two dads realized that they needed to reach out more and keep themselves informed. And the two girls, I'm guessing they realized that they needed to talk to their friends and not rely completely on their dads. Not a bad life lesson after all. So now sometimes the old boys network is intentionally biased, but often it's not. It's just that we become so busy and preoccupied that we don't realize that other people may not have the same access to information or resources, or they may not have the same perspectives that we do. And in fact, I'm sure there are many times when I have unintentionally uh, been so busy with my own life that I have made others feel like the out group and feel really left out. And that's not a nice feeling. You know, I can think of examples where I was perhaps at a networking kind of event or at an offsite, and I would talk to people who were in my comfort zone, and these would happen to be other senior managing directors who I kind of grew up with in the business. So it was fun for us to chat, but we probably should have been talking to those mid-level and junior people who were thinking we were probably very, uh, very much in the in-group and they were not. Or sometimes when I'm bouncing ideas off of people, I tend to choose the same three or four or five people that I know and trust their judgment to go and bounce ideas off of. So I'm kind of creating an in-group there too without intending to. It's just kind of faster and easier for me. So the question then becomes, in the unintentional situations, what can we really do about that? So here are some things that I am going to personally do to lessen the impact of the old boys network phenomenon. First, I'm gonna be aware. I'm gonna stop being so busy with my own stuff and so preoccupied and start being more present and conscious of 
who's around me and what they might be thinking and feeling and making sure that I am noticing who's feeling left out. Second, I'm going to reach out. When I'm in the in-group, I'm going to reach out to people who aren't in the in-group. And what I do is going to be to help them decode, decipher, figure out what's going on and uh, get in the flow of the information. That's what those two moms did for the two dads. And it's such a small shift in my behavior, but it's gonna have such a big impact, such a big positive impact. Third, give the benefit of the doubt. When I'm in the outside of the network, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt and look at it as though it's the non-sinister version. That way, I'll be able to reach out and not have it feel like I'm back in high school with a lunch tray walking by the cool kids' table and wondering where I'm going to sit. So now that we're all grown up, why not invite the new kid to sit at our lunch table and start building bridges from both sides? I think it will make us all more successful. What do you think? What will you do when you're in the old boys network and what will you do when you're on the outside looking in?